Welcome to our channel Electronics on Wheel and thank you for your support. Please like, subscribe and comment if you like the content of this channel. Many of you have requested us to create a video on CAN bus. What are the different communication modes in vehicle? So let's try to understand the first what are the different protocols which we are using in vehicle and then we will take CAN as a main topic of this video. So these are the different ways of communication in vehicle. So LIN, then we have CAN, CAN FD, FlexRay, Ethernet, and MOSH. So here we have given the comparison as well, how it varies based on the cost and what is the data rate for the different communication protocol. So if you see cost is increasing when we are going from LIN to CAN and then CAN to FlexRay and then FlexRay to most Bluetooth or Ethernet. But same time, the data rate is also increasing. So if you are getting more quality, more speed, then your cost will increase. So let's try to understand from this table. So this is the LIN, the first protocol. Your data rate is very less. It ranges between 20 kbps or 30 kbps if you see the primary use case of the lane then you have the mirror windows and seat motor where you do not drive in the critical function in your vehicle where you do not require the high data rates you can use the lane then we come to can can where the typical data rate is 500 kbps to 1 mbps and the maximum is 1 mbps which can be used for the powertrain, airbag, ECU to ECU communication. Whatever ECU you are using in your vehicle, you can use this CAN as a communication protocol. Then you have the CAN FD. CAN FD is having the more speed compared to the CAN. So in CAN we were having till 1 Mbps, but you can have here 2 to 8 mbps and 8 mbps is the maximum speed which you can take in the can fd so these are the typical range of data rate when real it might differ then you can use for the adas ev system and then large data packets where you want to send then you have the flex ray where your data rate is 2.5 mbps per channel and 10 mbps for the dual channel so this is the maximum data rate you can achieve in flex ray for the safety critical systems you can use that like brake pedals then brake by wires steer by wire then you have the ethernet where you can use till 100 mbps 100 base t1 and this is the typical data rate 100 mbps but maximum you can go to 1 gbps as well we call it 1000 base t1 which mostly used for the cameras radars and autonomous driving so we have the different levels of autonomous driving where you use the cameras and radars where it is necessary or it is mandatory where you are using the ethernet then you have the most where you can use the 25 mbps however it is lesser than the ethernet maximum you can use till 150 mbps it is more than the flex ray generally we use for the infotainment audio video or streaming it depends on the oem this is also a different protocol like you have the flex ray and ethernet so what are the three more commonly used protocols are like can can fd ethernet these are the three most used protocols in the automotive industry i hope you got the basic understanding about the protocol so let's move to the our next topic this is the main topic of our today's video can bus so as you know the can stand for the controller area network and it means that control units are network and interchange the data can data bus can be compared to the bus the normal bus where you travel from one point to other point which transport a large number of person on a different bus stop similarly can bus transport a large number of data so you can take the analogy from this normal bus where the person who are traveling through this bus these are the data packets and the bus is the medium by which they are traveling so can is the medium and data is the one which you 
transfer from one end to other end. So let's try to understand more about the can. First, we try to understand why the can needed itself. Then we will move to the operation of the can, how it works, what type of cans we have. So let's see, you want to transfer the data, right? The, what are the different or possible options to transfer the data? Let's first understand this. So there are two options of the data transfer in the vehicle. First is you are sending the each item of information over a separate wire. So separate wire also can transfer your data from one end to other end, right? Those hard wires which you use, the copper wires. But what is the challenge to transfer the data from one end to other end on a separate wire? So we have two issues. First is the engine control unit and the second is the gear control unit. And we want to transfer few information from the engine to the gear control unit and few information from gear control unit to the engine, right? Suppose if you want to transfer the information about the engine speed to gear control unit. So one wire you need for this, then you want to transfer the fuel consumption unit, then two wire two, then total wall position, then three. Then gear control unit also want to send the sum of the information to engine control. So fourth one is the engine intervention and fifth one is the upshift and downshift. So these are the information which want to transfer between these units. If you are using a separate wire and you are not using the CAN, what will be the condition? A total five wires are required for the data transfer in this case. As volume of the additional information increases, so does the number of wires also and number of pins on the control unit. This transfer mode is only suitable for exchanging a limited volume of information. So if you have only limited information, then it is good you go with a separate wire, hard wire. You are not going with a CAN or CAN protocols. Because when you are moving from separate wire or hard wire to CAN, the cost also adds. But when you want to transfer large information, then your separate wire will not work out because you have to add a lot of wires in your wiring harness. So let's see how the can simplify this problem. So the second option is that your all information is transferred along a two bidirectional wire in the can data bus. So the same five information, same two control units, engine control unit and gear control unit. And you want to transfer the engine speed information, fuel consumption, throttle valve, engine intervention, upshift and downshift. Then only these two bidirection wires are sufficient over the CAN protocol. All information is transferred along two wires regardless of number of participating control unit and the volume of information involved. So suppose if you want to add five more, so total 10 information if you want to add, then in first case you have to add five more wires. But in this case, these two wires are sufficient. You have to just change the software. So data transfer with CAN data bus would therefore make a sense if large volume of information is exchanged between the control units. So it is always recommended when you are transferring the large volume of information from one point to other point, then you should use the CAN data bus. I hope you are clear. Let's see what are the different benefits so that you can get one more clear picture on this. So what are the benefits if data protocol is extended to include the additional information? As I explained you earlier, if you want to add five more information, then you have to do the software modification, right? Then you have the low error rate through the continuous verification, fewer sensor signal lines through the multiple use of sensor signal, then high speed data rate is possible between the two control unit. So more space will be available because you are using only two wires and you are making the control units also smaller, right? So what used to happen in conventional way if you have these different issues instrument cluster engine you have transmission then you have to put the separate wire for each of the function or each of the information if you want to go with a separate wire and it would be a multi wire looms right but when it comes to the bus network any additional information or 
large number of information only two wires are sufficient over that you can transfer the information we will see the working principle of the can in upcoming slides but you just understand what we are doing from the conventional way to the can bus these are the different ecus which you have in your vehicle and you are using only two wires but if you will be using the conventional way then you have to put lot of wire from one then from here also lot of wire it would be a completely mess in terms of wiring i hope you understand that what are the different benefits when you are using the can bus over conventional multiple wire loops so let's understand the principle of data transfer in can there are two wires in can where you are transferring all your information on these two wires and these are the different control units control unit 1 2 3 and 4 how this data transfer happens between these four different control units so suppose a subscriber control unit speaks the data this speaks the data into the line network while other subscriber will listen to this data so suppose if this subscriber said hello then this subscriber will also listen hello this subscriber will also listen hello this subscriber also will listen hello but there would be some subscriber which will be interested to listen this hello and they will utilize it but the other subscriber will choose to ignore this data this is how the data transferred on the bus so all the data will be available for all the control units but it depends on the interest or it depends on the requirement which data can be useful or which data can be accepted by control unit 4 control unit 3 control unit 2 so this is the basic data transfer principle let's understand into deeper so from the beginning i continuously saying in this video that we are using the two wires for the can right but we have the single wire can as well which is called as single hw can or gm LAN. the single wire can was developed by the gm and they have given this name as gm LAN. so one thing i just want to clear here is lin and this single wire can is different in terms of protocol and everything we will see first that why this single wire can exist and then we will see what is the working principle and drawback of the single wire can and because of that you have the two wire can so let's try to understand why single wire can exist so designed for the low speed low cost network like body electronics then reduces the wiring cost because you are using only one communication wire and the ground then your typical speed is very limited till 33.3 kbps and sometimes it can go to 83.3 kbps but if you remember the lin speed right data speed then it was somewhat similar like 20 kbps so it is not adding any value if you draw one conclusion from this data speed that whatever lin is doing a single wire can is also doing something similar or little bit better here i would like to mention one thing most of the oems are not using this single wire can nowadays this single wire can is no longer in use the different examples I, i'll just give you where this was used like door module seat control hvac lighting what is the working principle of this can so if you see the classic can we use the standard iso 118982 which use the differential signaling so i will explain you what does it mean the differential signaling when we will see in the next slide this two wire can the single wire can use the standard 118983 uses a single wire reference to the ground what are the electrical characteristic of this single wire can runs through all the nodes bit rate as we discussed till 33.3 kbps very low speed there are two states recessive state and dominant in recessive state the voltage ranges to 7 volt or sometimes 5 volt also then second is the dominant state that is the zero volt the signaling principle in this so recessive is logic one bus held near 7 volt and dominant is logic zero 
bus pull towards the ground that is zero volt trans receiver are designed to detect these voltage levels absolute value note the differential value i will discuss in detail what is the meaning of this differential signal this includes the sleep and wake up capability critical for the modules like uh, bcm and door ecu so this can also gives both the facilities you can transfer the data and you can use for the wake up capability as well but the problem is you have to work on the two different voltage level as earlier i told you that 5 volt for the normal and the 8 volt for the wake up capability now let's see why we use the two wires what is the meaning of this differential signaling then you will understand why we have shifted from single wire can to the two wire can so let's try to understand the can system principle now, why do we use two wires in can system so in can bus a data is transmitted by changing the voltage difference between the two wires so this is the basic understanding whenever you are sending the data you are sending in the form of voltage when you are sending this data you are not sending in the absolute value you are sending in terms of voltage difference this you have to understand in this so can h we represent as a can high can low we represent as can l so instead of using the standard logic 0 and 1 like in uart can uses two states one is recessive state and other one is the dominant state which we have discussed in the single wire can as well right there are two different logic level you use so when it is idle you use logic level 1 and when it is active you use the logic level 0 now coming to the voltage levels as we discussed that your data is transferring in the form of voltage and when it comes to the receiver understand the voltage difference not the absolute value so when voltage on can high is 2.5 in recessive state voltage on can low is 2.5 then voltage difference would be 0 volt and this logic level is called as 1 and state is called as ideal and recessive state condition is ideal that bus is available to transfer the data then dominant state the voltage would be 3.5 volt voltage on can low would be 1.5 volt and the voltage difference is 2 volt and this called is as a zero active okay and these voltage levels are drawn from the iso 11892 now coming to the recessive state which is idle both wires sit at 2.5 and the difference is zero volt which we have seen dominant state that is the active communication can high goes to 3.5 volt can low drops to 1.5 volt and this difference is what receiver reads not the individual voltage so receiver does not read 2.5 or 1.5 or 3.5 what receiver reads receiver reads the voltage difference between can high and can low and then based on this it makes the decision so i'll just give you one example here the differential amplifier for the drive train can data bus so these are the two wires one is the can high wire and other one is the can low wire normally these are the twisted wires we will discuss why they are twisted what is the difference how this magnetic field plays a role in this twisting 